the numbers are staggering. They continue to be staggering. Children are food insecure in the state. Hunger and food insecurity are a problem for residents in New Jersey each year. The food insecurity issues are our neighbors' issues. As a speaker, this has been an issue that's close to my heart, and I've made it the cornerstone of what we're doing, strengthening our, our state's uh, efforts to alleviate hunger and to fight food insecurity. Uh, and we've been able to do an awful lot of good, but it doesn't happen alone. No one has fought harder against food insecurity in the state than the speaker. New Jersey's food security champion. Now, Speaker Coughlin is a guy I love. He's an extraordinary leader, and he's made it a priority to address hunger and food insecurity in our state. Childhood hunger and food insecurity remains a serious problem, unfortunately, in every corner of the country. But I think that the, the public in general um, and many of the elected officials didn't understand the scope of the problem. I think there's a lot of myths and misconceptions about who experiences hunger and food insecurity. What we find in New Jersey, a lot of people from all facets of whether they're financial, whether they are educated, it doesn't make a difference. Food insecurity is real in New Jersey. I didn't have the money after I got this devastating operation and I was laid off from my job. I could pay my rent, but I had no money after I paid for the medicine to buy any quality foods that I needed. My husband had gotten laid off of work. I was the only one bringing income in the home. <clears throat> I didn't know where to turn to. I didn't know what to do. There are life circumstances that change in an instant. Right? You didn't know you were going to get hurt when you went to work that day. No, right. right? You didn't know if you're going to get sick, that your husband's going to come home one day from the doctor and say, look, I, I need a new kidney. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm almost brought to tears, darling, because when I think of the uh, uh, if I had to pay the cash price for sure. this stuff, I know I wouldn't be able to afford it. So here's my theory on food insecurity and why, what it really means. I think it is an incredible opportunity for us to help people who need it. They come to people, most people don't come show up at a food pantry until they're desperate, right? People will resist coming because they don't want to admit that they desperately need help. And then finally they do and they come. And when they do, if you treat them the way you treat them, with a, you get here, you get the pick. You get treated like a human being. You don't get to be treated like this is something that you're, you should be thankful for. Rather, you should be welcomed and, and felt like you're getting something that you deserve and earn, right? Now you've got the trust. And then you build. So uh, suburban hunger takes many different uh, forms. We see a lot of seniors who are living on a, a very small nest egg. We see college students. We see recent immigrant families. We see families where uh, parents are doing gig work. We see um, just every flavor of member of our community. Um, so we're in the process of building out that infrastructure with the idea being that food insecurity um, can be solved. It's the easiest of our, the structural problems around us. I wish that I could report that any county in the state of New Jersey was immune to food insecurity. Uh, but to say so would be to say something that's not true. I live in Hamburg, New Jersey. This is Sussex County. What you got Hamburg. It's a state. What brings you here most of, most of the time? I had, uh, no, I don't come here, but I go to the spot of food okay. pantry because of Bali we have. I met her like more than 12 years ago. I've been going to the food pantry because I, am, I need help. I met Marie, uh, like I said, about 12 years ago. Um, she had come to the United States after um, leaving Haiti. She has been, um, can I use the word refugee, yeah. from Haiti. So she came here with like nothing. She came here on an ambulance. Um, she was, can I say? Yes, I she was shot. Continue. She was shot in Haiti. 
So, and she left everything behind. She was brought here on an ambulance plane, and uh, but since that time, she's been to us, and we help support her um, through her food with her children. Food insecurity is something that affects everybody. They don't. It doesn't. You don't care. It doesn't care what color your skin is, what God you pray to, who you love. It doesn't ca matter anything. It's about a human thing. It's a human thing. Our needs are so diverse. Like here we are, we're talking about Joan, and we love our seniors. But on a daily basis, we are seeing so many different people. You know, I have an 80-year-old who's homeless and in her car. I have a number of people who are suffering from addictions, and we deliver to the uh, local hotels where they're staying at. So there's, there's something new that comes up every day. And to, to be able to actually meet the needs, I mean, sometimes just helping people a little bit every day is a big thing. I would say the biggest problem would be transportation, if you want to know the truth. That might be a hard one to, to fix, but um, that's the biggest problem. We are currently seeing pantry utilization at double what it was before the pandemic. And it's not just that the numbers rose during the pandemic and stayed there. Those numbers are climbing. Our pantry utilization rates are up 30% just since last year. Speaker Coughlin is a humanitarian leader in every sense of the word. When the pandemic relief from the federal government went away, he improved the state SNAP benefit. So the minimum SNAP benefit is higher um, than it would have been otherwise. He has also provided uh, with the help of the governor um, and other elected officials, um, substantial funding for food banks and all of those agencies in our networks to enable us to purchase food and improve our capacity and infrastructure. It's not like we have a shortage of food in the state of New Jersey. It's that we don't, we have challenges in getting the food to people who need it. And that's something we ought to be able to do. So we are delighted to have you here today to celebrate the awarding of five brand new cargo vans to our valued pantry partners. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and it's not just handing the keys to a new van to a few pantries. We're also forging partnerships between those pantries and local retailers who have committed to providing regular donations. I think the speaker's leadership on this issue has been critically important. The awareness allows you to tackle the challenge. One of the key things, and I think, you know, this is where the speaker has been very, very helpful in bringing the right people around the table um, to really talk about, talk through ways that we can work together um, to try to address hunger and food insecurity, really promoting cross-sector collaboration, bringing philanthropy, bringing nonprofit organizations, bringing policymakers, right, bringing the public, bringing all of, all of the right people around the table to work together. When you can make a difference, and there's a way to make a difference, and you can really do something positive, I think you should do it. And that's why I do it.